industry we came across the condition where combined conduction and convection occurs as in general for fluids flowing through the tubes as reactant or as a product and we want to cool it or hot it heat it in that case also we supply heat the fluid inside the tubes get heated by convection and the tube wall in which the heat is transferred taking place as in some cases we use steam we provide a steam from outside and the fluid is flowing inside the steam is causes the tube wall to heat and the tube wall to heat and the because of the heat of tube wall the fluid flowing inside the tube gets heated that's in this case like in this case we got convection as well as conduction because the fluid gets heated because of the convection and the wall of the tube gets heated because of the convection and the heat transfer from the wall outer surface of the wall to the inner surface of the wall is because of the conduction there are so many cases in where we find at industrial level we find conduction and convection in a combined condition we find combined conduction and convection today the topic of our study is about the combined conduction and convection also we came across with the furnace walls as walls in the unit in the industries where also we get similar cases we have higher temperature at the inside of the furnace and the lower temperature on outside of the furnace and the hot fluid or the hot air inside the furnace gets the heat by convection and the outer wall of the the heat from the inner wall to the outer wall flows by the conduction and the environment and this is dissipated to the environment even though it is negligible but this is dissipated to the environment because of the convection on the outer wall of the furnace now we are is the content of our lecture today first we discuss about the uh, we get a quick review about the fourier law of conduction and the newton law of cooling because we have to combine both of them we get an introduction in which we get a quick quick review about the fourier's law of heat conduction and newton's law of cooling after that we develop the formula for the combined conduction and convection how we able to calculate the combined conduction and convection we develop the formula for it and after that we discuss an example to explain how we able to calculate the condi combined conduction and combined heat transfer with the help of example we explain it now moving towards the introduction first we discuss about the fourier's law what's the fourier's law is listed as uh, discussed earlier the heat flux between two points in a body or two bodies at different temperature when coming to a physical contact and if the there exists a temperature gradient if there is exist there exists a temperature gradient then the heat flow from one point to another point to of the body or from one body to another body this heat flux is directly proportional to the temperature gradient in the body this fourier's law states that the heat flux is directly proportional to the temperature gradient gradient existing in the body or the temperature gradient between two bodies when they came in physical contact now moving towards the application as we saw that if we have a wall slab of thickness delta x and we have a temperature t1 on one side and t2 on the other side then the total heat transfer t or heat flux may be taken as as minus k delta t by delta x where k is the thermal conductivity of the, which depends on the material of the wall a is the cross section area cross section area normal cross section area delta t is the temperature difference or temperature gradient existing on the wall and delta x is the thickness of the wall that is the fourier's law which we discussed earlier now what is newton's law say that is newton's law say newton's law said that the rate of change of temperature of an object and is proportional to the temperature difference in its own temperature and the ambient temperature the temperature of its surround so meaning thereby that if is if any object is at specific temperature at higher temperature and the environment is at a lower temperature then it's the surface of the object dissipate energy towards the environment and this dissipation is directly proportional to the difference between the temperature of these two that's mean the surface of the 
the hot surface and the temperature of the environment. Similarly, the hot surface and the temperature of the fluid flowing over that surface. Now, considering an uh, example, there is a flat plate at a higher temperature and a stream of fluid, a stream of fluid is flowing over the temperature or over the surface. And we can see easily that the fluid temperature is Tf and the surface temperature is Ts. Then now, calcul then calculating the heat transfer, we get Q is equal to Ha Ts minus Tf, where H is the heat transfer coefficient, A is the surface area of the hot surface, and Ts is the temperature of hot surface, and Tf is the temperature of the fluid. Now, this is the simple application of Newton's law. Now, combined, what is the combined calculation? At the combined cal calculation, total heat transfer is the sum of the heat transfer due to conduction as well as the heat transfer due to the conduction. In this case, we get the sum of these two heat transfers. Now, trying to get a formula for it, we are giving an example is given that a fluid is flowing on one side of a wall which is at the temperature Ta. The fluid A is flowing from one side of a wall to at temperature A and Ta and the fluid B is flowing on the other side, the fluid B is at temperature Tb and the surface temperature from one side is T1 and from at our other side is T2, T T1 and T2 are the temperature at the faces of the solid and if we assume that H1 and H2 is the heat transfer coefficient on both the side and K is the thermal conductivity of the material. Now applying both the laws, applying the Fourier's law as well as the Newton's law. On the fluid sides, the two fluid sides A1 and 2 for the fluid A and for fluid B, we have Newton's law and for the, term, for the thickness of the slab and for the wall, we have Fourier's law. Now, applying for the first, applying the Fourier's law on the wall with the thickness of delta x, area A and thermal conductivity K, we get the value minus K T2 minus T1 over delta x. It is the Fourier's law. We get this expression from the Fourier's law. And the heat transfer through fluid 1 or through fluid A is H1 A T A minus T1. Which is H1 is the heat transfer coefficient on side 1 and A is the cross-sectional area and T A is the heat transfer temperature of the fluid and T1 is the temperature of the surface. As we discussed earlier, the temperature of the surface and the temperature of the fluid. Now, on the fluid B side, B, B, we get H2 A T2 minus Tb, where H2 is the heat transfer coefficient on plus side A and T2 is the surface temperature of the, the side on which the fluid B is flowing and Tb is the temperature of the fluid, Tb is the temperature of the fluid. Now, now combining both of them and getting the expression for Q, we get the expression, taking out the expression for Ta minus T1, T1 minus T2, T1, T2 minus Tb and adding them, we get the overall heat transfer through the system, given system, which is equals to Ta minus Tb is equals to, Q is equals to Ta minus Tb divided by 1, minus 1 over H1A plus delta X by Ka plus 1 over H2A. This is the overall heat transfer or total heat transfer through the system which is taking place in the given system. The final formula for the heat transfer is given as and whereas you may write down Q as U naught A delta T overall which, which can be written as U is the overall heat transfer coefficient. Now explaining both of them independently we get first Q total heat transfer which is Ta minus T which is the temperature difference across the system combined the convection as well as the conduction and 1 H 1 A 1 over H 1 A is the resistance offered by the fluid layer 1 heat transfer taking place through the fluid, fluid layer 1 delta X by K A is the resistance offered by the wall and 1 over H 2 by A is the resistance offered by the fluid 2 R 1 R 2 R 3 these are three resistance offered by the system from the heat, for the heat transfer. The heat transfer that is generated because of the temperature difference Ta minus Tb. This is the driving force and this is the resistance, resistance driving force or resistance. Now we may write down again the heat transfer in terms of U, where U is the overall heat transfer coefficient. 
and now explaining the overall whole heat transfer coefficient we get that overall heat transfer coefficient is 1 over 1 over h1 by delta x by k plus 1 over h2 this is the overall heat transfer coefficient the heat transfer coefficient combined with the convection as well as convection it is used in the case of combined heat transfer this this is the value for overall heat transfer now to explain this problem we get a example a glass window with an area of 0.557 meters square is installed in a window volume outside wall of room the glass is 3.18 mm thick and has a conductivity of 0.692 watt per meter per kelvin the inside room temperature is 299.9 kelvin and the outside air temperature is 266.5 kelvin the convection heat transfer coefficient on both this side inside as well as outside is 8.5 watt meter per square per kelvin now we have to calculate the heat loss through the glass now for the solution first we realize the problem we have a glass with the area as we can see in the front view with an area 0.557 meter square and thermal conductivity 0.692 watt per meter per kelvin on while seeing from the side we can get that inside temperature is 299.9 kelvin and the outside temperature is 266.5 kelvin and heat transfer coefficient on both the side is 8.5 and r1 r2 r3 are the resistance offered by these wood frames and these materials thickness is 3.18 meter millimeter it's give, this is the description of the problem uh, visualization actually representation of the uh, problem now moving to calculations we get, we have to the, to make it easy we first calculate r1 r2 r3 which is one over hia and r2 is delta x by k a and r3 is one over h o uh, a putting the values of different me, different parameters we get the q as 78.78 watt this is the value of heat transfer now it is very simple to understand and you, i think you will able to get the problem now you to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient we put the value of the formula of overall heat transfer and put the values of different parameters we get the overall heat transfer coefficient which is equal to 4.17 now putting the value of overall heat transfer and calculating the heat total heat transfer you again you get 78 now you have to uh, submit an assignment with this for the same problem well, with the development of the uh, dimensions of wall here we also include the dimensions of wall and you have to calculate the total heat transfer coefficient total heat transfer which is equals to the sum of the heat transfer because of the glass which is we already calculated now you have to calculate the heat transfer from wooden wall the dimensions are given by, by using which you can calculate the area and after that you may add the heat transfer through the wooden wall as well as the heat transfer through the glass which gives you the total heat transfer through the wall and total heat transfer across the room it concludes our concludes our total lecture today's lecture and the conclusion is that the total heat transfer in the combined conduction and convection is some of the two heat transfers that is because of the conduction and as well as conduction okay thank you very much and then also on the next time turn we discuss about the circular pipe or conduit thank you very much